you need to standardize before you optimize. If you don't master the original form, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's no point copying mm-hmm. and pasting it. Mm-hmm. There's no point compounding it because exactly. it's going to be compounded with error. When you choose the moments that you need to work hard, you show up. Mm. But when you have the moments to rest, you honor that too. You don't have to be her in 2023. You can still be becoming her. That's mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh. Hello and welcome to the To My Sisters podcast. I'm Renee. And I'm Courtney and we are your online sisters and hosts of the To My Sisters podcast. Now we are all about promoting the wellness growth and development of a community of sisters across the world. And welcome back to season four, baby. Hello. 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 What's up? That was actually not planned. That is not our theme tune. Welcome. <laughs> not sisters in the club. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome back. And we are so excited to be starting season four. It's a new vibe. It's a new season. It's brand new, baby. You're going to see brand some changes new. around here. Don't yeah. get too comfortable like Don't we've been on this couch. But even though it's a new year, happy new year, sisters. Yay. We wanted to come with something familiar, but also just to come and spur you on. Let's go. Let's for go. For 2023. And so as we always do, we're going to start off the year with a banger <laughs> to help you really set the tone for what 2023 is going to be like for you. Right. And so today... We are talking about, it's not new year, new me. Mm-hmm. It's new year, more me. That's we right. are talking about how to stack and compound your habit. Why? Because it feels like every, I don't know about you, but I feel like it feels like every year, everyone wants to start with fresh goals. Right, right, And right. they start with a fresh new perspective and everything is new, new, new. And it can kind of feel like you are discarding everything that has happened the year prior as if it was not valuable, as if it was not um, helpful, as if there was not so much to carry in into the new year with you and so this year we want to talk about the fact that you have spent so long listening to the podcast you have spent so long listening to your favorite content creators reading your favorite books working on your favorite products projects sorry um and you've been spending time investing in yourself this year it's time to compound on that and it's time to stack on top of that and make use of what you've learned rather than absorbing new 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 Mm, do you get what i mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah but in true tms fashion we have some housekeeping the first of which is to announce the vision 22 winner of december and talk about how vision the vision fund is going to be working this year the vision for the vision Can you guys, you see that I'm in my bag today. <laughs> you really are. All right. So we've had some excellent, like you guys are really killing it with the visions. Mm-hmm. And we're just so proud of everyone that submitted a comment, submitted an entry. Thank you all so much, sisters. But to the sister, Miss Ayo, mm-hmm. Oluwa Tudimu. Oh, okay. Not the Nigerian Nigeria You know what I mean? You know what I mean? A little, a little, a little. But. My good sister's really been on top of it. She increased her salary by 12K. Come on. Which really helped with the nursery fees that she has for her kids and making her future study goals possible. Come on. She also found out that she was pregnant after applying and uh, really wanted to give up, but went for the interview anyway and was told that she was the best candidate ever interviewed. Come on, somebody. Woo, ever. She's very proud of herself and super grateful for the friends who encouraged her to go for it. Now to get through maternity leave with the head on is the next challenge and she'll she'll succeed in it there you, you go. will your midday thank you so much for your entry thank you to all of your entries and allowing for us to just hear your praises and your thanksgiving as you came to the end of 2022 2022 was a good year it was a rough sure. year it was a year full of challenges but sis you are still here and so we're gonna make sure that you get through Come again and you thrive you glow and grow if you will so ayome day we'll be sending you your 100 pounds congratulations for being the last vision 22 winner hello and at that the 22 season of vision comes to an end and the vision fund starts oh so miss renee could you please explain to us so a hundred pounds was cute (laughs) It was nice. It was like, let's see if the sisters are up up for the challenge. And it's Mm. been beautiful seeing how, you know, a hundred pounds has been a nice little start, a pack, a nice little thing or, Mm. you know, a little bit, a little bit of GBP. (laughs) However, 
Here at Team My Sisters, we are like flying in season four. Mm. This is the sisterhood revolution. Mm. And we want to give you guys a revolutionary amount of money mm. to implement the vision that you have for 2023. Mm-hmm. To that end, mm-hmm. we won't be offering a sister a hundred pounds. We are offering a sister a thousand GBP. Golly. A thousand GBP. There will be an application form that we will share mm-hmm. in our mailing list and in our description over here on YouTube. Essentially, what we need you to do is to fill out the application. What is your vision for this year? Mm-hmm. What do you intend to do? Mm-hmm. How has TMS helped you so far? Mm-hmm. And what will you be doing with the a thousand pounds if you are picked that's the most important question (laughs) because we we don't want you to just obviously you know go to the club's bottles but we are hoping that this would be an opportunity for you to put that vision to work and manifest it's not enough for us to sit up on here and say manifest manifest without sowing the seed so consider us sowing you know a seed into your vision yes and sisters we really do believe in you this year so unlike with previous challenges last year where we waited for you to kind of send us evidence that you had succeeded right. in the challenge this one we are sowing into you without seeing the results first because we do believe in you so we want you to write down a vision or it could be surrounding your personal development it could be surrounding a project something you've always wanted to start it could be a podcast it could be you know a charity it could be what a hobby whatever it is a business write down the vision of what it is you want to build or what you see yourself having in the next six months and then at the end of January after we have received those forms you have till literally like the 28th of January at the end of January when we receive those forms in February we will announce who we're giving the money to and that will be the person we'll be holding accountable till july and then july we will pick somebody else so i know there are fewer winners this year but the stakes are a lot higher and we just want to make sure that we are appreciating you and hopefully this can be the big the beginning of an even bigger fund Mm. that just grows and grows and we can invest in more people more projects more businesses but yeah that is how vision is going to run this year so sis are you ready to get that one thousand pounds and start Glowing and growing, thriving in your dreams, Ooh, being I a would, woman who executes vision. I would love one grand. I tell Ooh, you, cost if of we living had crisis. one grand before we started this podcast, <laughs> so. you might have had visuals. <laughs> you might have had visuals. <laughs> you might have had visuals you know (laughs) um but yeah so that's how that's gonna work we hope that you guys enjoy that idea and we can't wait to read your google form so check out the link in the description but in true to my sister's fashion we have a ding 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 dilemma and this one is a great one because it is a dilemma update oh yeah yeah yeah. we're still checking in with the girls not an update we're still checking in with the girls okay cool let's get into it Mm -hmm. this is the original dilemma it's from a couple episodes ago so my dilemma is i have a guy friend and we are pretty close we've been friends for almost four years and we talk and hang out a lot Mm. he talks to me about girls he likes and me about guys that i'm into about a year ago i feel like he's been hinting that he has an interest in me but never said it directly and i felt weird because we have always had the dynamic of being just friends or bros Mm -hmm. recently he has been talking to me about a girl he wants to ask to be his girlfriend Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I felt jealous at first I wondered if I liked him but I see him as a friend and I feel like I just like the idea of being with him because I've been having this feeling with other guys and it has passed I feel like a terrible friend for being jealous but also I don't feel like I actually like him and that it's just the idea of being with a guy full stop because I've never had anything romantic with anyone before Mm -hmm. the moral of the story is how do I know that I'm just reaching for guys near to me or that I actually have an interest in them? I love our friendship and do not want to ruin it because of a lustful feeling. Mm. Love your podcast, signed a confused sister. Mm -hmm. But now the dilemma update. So after we gave her advice and we'll basically like either state your intention or leave this man alone okay get serious or leave this man alone right and let him move on yeah here's the update hey sisters hey. so this was my dilemma for a few months ago what i've just read to you mm-hmm. and i thought i'd update you guys you can feature this update in one of your episodes if you'd like mm-hmm. so i realized i do like my guy friend of four years but a week after i sent the dilemma he already asked the girl to be his girlfriend oh. 
Although I know the feelings are there, oh, I've decided no. the best step forward is to suppress the feelings I have for him Damn. because I have the utmost respect for him and his girlfriend, but right. most importantly for myself. I didn't want to admit I liked him at first because mm -hmm. I knew it was too late, but mm -hmm. I had to be real with myself. I think the best step forward for me is to not talk to him as often just to help myself get over it, mm -hmm. but of course still maintain the friendship because I truly appreciate him as a friend. I wish I expressed how I felt before before he asked her but everything happens for a reason and I have to accept this outcome and just be a supportive friend mm. because he's such a respectful guy and deserves the best right. thank you so much again for your advice signed a no longer confused sister oh man <sighs> the cookie has crumbled uh, it's crumbled bro so I kind of wanted to take this one less from an advisory place because she has you know made a decision right but kind of help her in navigating this post acceptance mm -hmm, era mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. she's in as well as kind of give advice for the girlies out there who struggle to identify their feelings feel like they may have missed out yeah, on something because yeah. they were maybe a bit too late to jump on what they actually wanted yeah um maybe some feelings of regret mm. yeah Man, that's unfortunate. Sorry to hear that. We definitely was rooting for you, sis. And, you know, sometimes that's actually the way the cookie crumbles, 100. right? I think sometimes we can also put a lot of pressure onto ourselves. Like if we've identified those feelings, even though it's taken a while mm. for us to articulate them, there's that feeling of damn FOMO. I've completely missed out. I will never find love again. It's very tempting to catastrophize mm. and think that this is your only opportunity to find somebody that you feel like you could build a life with. So I think the first thing is to kind of like take stock and take some time away. I love the approach that sis has already outlined in Honestly. Um, her update where it's kind of like to protect my own feelings. I'm going to have a period or some time of distance yeah. away which I think is important because again when we're thinking about feelings emotions when we're thinking about how we feel towards other people mm -hmm. sometimes it's necessary for you to take a little bit of a step back and especially because there's another party in this mm. his girlfriend I love the fact that you said you know I'm trying to be respectful of the fact that they are together mm. he's picked her and mm. that's the way the cookie yeah. has crumbled now so I think her initial approach is very very measured I think it's very sober and I think it's the right way to go and I think many of us can learn from that because I know there's some sisters fight for the love. <laughs> Fight. Don't let his That's your man. Don't let your boyfriend stop you from finding your husband. Let me tell don't you let something your girlfriend here. stop you from finding your wife. Oh. It's called cheating and adultery. Hey. <laughs> it's Hello. called infidelity. <laughs> <laughs> You're dancing a dangerous it's, it's, game. It's called from my mother likes to say from frying pads to open fire. <laughs> that one is warfare. You know, you don't want to be in warfare. Um, so I think just respecting the fact that everyone here is adults and mm. the decision has been made and, mm. you know, it hasn't been in your initial favor is important. Mm. And taking that step away is really important. Mm. And I also love the fact that she still wants to support him as a friend. Mm. Right. Like in these kind of situations, often people think that there's no opportunity for repairing yeah. and no opportunity to bounce back from yeah. something like this. But I love that she's acknowledged that, you know, this is a good guy. Mm. Aside from my feelings, aside from my romantic feelings towards him, this is a good guy. Mm. Yeah. and we were friends for yeah. a while and yeah. as much as you know i've gone through this phase of having feelings for you i respect that you're still a good guy and you're still a good friend so let me actually be here for you right. so i think that's important um i think taking your time if you're in a sim similar situation taking your time re-entering that phase can be really really helpful because it gives you time to like really work through maybe spend some time with other friends you have mm. maybe really focus on something that you're really interested at the time um, and even maybe when you feel comfortable, spending time with the girlfriend mm. could really, really be helpful to really understand, okay, what is it about you that, you know, my friend really likes? Like, it makes me think of like, say my brother has a girlfriend or like a male friend of mine has a girlfriend the approach is very much oh let me get to know you because right. i can now integrate you into this community right. that um my friend is building so when you feel comfortable and when you feel as though you've processed through your emotions and your feelings for your friend and you can see him as only a friend this is actually an opportunity to build a relationship with her too um so being intentional about hanging with hanging out with them together mm. building your independent relationship with her mm. um i think is a really good way to to go about it and then when you're ready mm. re-entering the dating pool ah when you're ready that's though, good advice yeah when you're ready enter into the date you know it's a new year all that kind of stuff but 
honestly, sometimes time is all you need and really mm. an opportunity to process through those emotions. And again, understanding and not catastrophizing and thinking this is your only chance yeah. at love. I think sometimes, especially not just women, but also men as well, there's always the ah, the one that got away. And I think when we perceive love as something that's more intentional and active, mm. we'll realize that it's not necessarily just about finding your quote unquote only soulmate right. or finding that one person, but it's about who is the person that I think or who are the people that I could potentially be compatible with, who are intentional, who are um, aligned with me and who I could develop feelings for. I think love is something that's a lot more active and intentional. And it means that you um, prevent yourself from falling into the trap of feeling like you've missed out completely. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've missed out on this one chance, but there will be so many other chances, so many other opportunities to find other men that mm. you know, you'll be interested in and other men that will equally be good guys. You know, there's a lot of men there is a lot of men out there i trust me honey there's some really good guys out there for real and even using this as an opportunity again getting to know um the girlfriend mm -hmm. um re-entering that friendship with your friend mm -hmm. who knows they may be able to hook you up with somebody like this is true opening up your pool um so i think your her initial approach has been really really measured really I really agree. good but thinking over the long term um, remembering that this is not your only opportunity you will definitely find love as long as you're intentional and active about yeah. it um and remembering that what is for you will actually not miss you there will mm. be other opportunities i think sometimes we think of um you know like motorways mm -hmm. when you miss the exit mm. it's like ah oh, man you have to go all the way back around yeah. to get to that you know same exit yeah. but there will be multiple points that you'll be able to exit. It's yeah. not just an endless road that has one exit and that's it. Now you're just driving forever. You yeah. will never find your peace from yeah. exiting. Mm. There will be an opportunity to go around that roundabout or go around that motorway, that junction, whatever, and find an opportunity to exit. And sometimes you find that exiting later was actually better than, yeah. in hindsight, hindsight is a hell of a thing. It gives yeah. you so much wisdom. But one thing you may find is that it was actually better to exit at a different point than yeah. the stage that you ori you originally thought yeah um, or exit at a different place exactly yeah so yeah that's what i would say i think i'm really just like happy with obviously i'm not happy with the result in so far as i was rooting for this to work but out the maturity but the maturity yeah the grace the wisdom and the approach was you were a real sister for real. like you're a real sister and i think that's even demonstrated like in the way that she's trying to respect the girlfriend like the fact you even mentioned that you're trying to be respectful to the girlfriend Absolutely. it's like there's no competition there there's no um desire to kind of betray that sisterhood and i think that that's that's important and this is the year of the sisterhood revolution and i think this kind of response to a dilemma and a to to a development in a relationship and in a friendship is a great demonstration of sisterhood Absolutely. and you can read more about that in our book so this year <laughs> march knife <laughs> march knife to my sisters Hello. a guide to building lifelong friendships Hello. by renee kapuku that's and right. courtney daniela Boati. she's currently overexposed on the camera <laughs> highly but overexposed. um She's so, gonna have B roll. <laughs> you're such a producer, but I said not to worry. She's gonna have B roll, so you can wow. see how gorgeous this proof is. This is not the final version of the book. We've even made tweaks to the color, um, and it's gonna be hardback if you order Absolutely. this this side of the year. But it's available to pre order currently on Amazon, now. and it's for the UK girls. Yeah, the UK for the girlies. Europe girls. We're working. Ooh, we're working. We're girls, working hard. So UK girls, right now you got the exclusive. You've, You've got, got the to. first buy. Um, but we are so thankful for all the support we have received. We have heard so many positive feedback. Some of our friends and people in the book industry, we don't really know them, um, <laughs> <laughs> have read this book and they are readers and we have heard such great things. And to hear people finally get to read the book Absolutely. who aren't part of our publishing team and have such amazing things to say about it has helped us see that this book really was a labor of love worth doing um mm. we poured our hearts into this book but more importantly we want this book to transform you right so we talk there's a the reason why i brought it up here is there's a chapter about jealousy and mm -hmm, comparison mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this whole book is a dedication to sisterhood and it's about the fact that we are our sister's keeper and so i love that in this situation sis was like like, I gotta take, I gotta have sissy back oh, because yeah. it's so easy to be like, I was here first and I like him. So, so easy, man. And so many girls have done it, right? And right. then they become an op. Go and listen to our episode about being friends with people in relationships oh, because man. boundaries, boundaries are necessary. And I think boundaries also protect us. And exactly. I, I like that she has a grasp of the fact that 
I've got to protect myself. I've got to protect my heart as well by not really pondering too much on what this could have been, what I've lost, because the possibility isn't there. And might I say that you would be pandering into the patriarchy, which we have spent Ooh. many a season dismantling, because patriarchy dictates that women need to compete Pete. for men and, you know, um, the male gaze. And it's just Bruh. like, actually, you don't need to compete these things are not scarce. Mm. Let's talk about that. Oh, no, Renee. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get to the main episode in a second, but yes, yes. These things are not <laughs> scarce. Things, patriarchy has mm. women feeling as though we're operating in places of scarcity. Mm. So even when we think about like, even the, I mean, we're going to talk about this later at some point. Just stay tuned for season four. <laughs> Even this whole notion of like the high value man and like trying to ensure that you are the trophy wife or the mm. trophy um, feminine babe for mm. this guy. I think sometimes it feels as though society and patriarchy has created this illusion of there's no men available that are good right. men. So when you do find a good man, you've got to make sure that you can do everything possible to keep him, whether it's cooking, cleaning, whether it's mm -hmm. making sure yourself presentable, mm -hmm. whether it's fighting other babes that's for this the man. One, that's a problem. No. Yeah. Um, girl code. We need to bring back girl code. Right. In 2023, right, right, right. let's bring back girl code right. where it's like, if you do know that somebody's in a you know committed relationship or yeah. if you do know that a friend like likes someone and is going to make that move on them, understand that you don't have to compete with her for that particular man. There we go. Love is not scarce. There that's what I need go. the sisters Ooh, to know. That's love and love from a good man is it's not, not scarce. scarce. And I think that that's an important thing. Like, I think we've been hammered with so much content this year that, um, sorry, over the last few years, sorry, mm. that have told us that like, to find love is hard. And to be to be fair, it's not an easy quest. <laughs> like, right, let's, right. let's be real. Right. Let's not lie out here and say, you know, like, these people are out here, you step out onto the street and somebody's like, hey, I'm Prince Charming, marry me, or whatever your desire is. Right. Good people are hard to find. Good friends, good family, like it's, it's something that takes work. However, when you go into it with a scarcity mindset, you start to do things out of character. You start to do things which completely are the antithesis of the person that you say you mm -hmm. want to be. And I think it's important that even in our pursuit of things, we still remain the people who we want to be Absolutely. in character, in moral, but also in allegiance. And I think a lot of us need to Com converse, have a conversation about our loyalty especially when it comes to sisterhood and this isn't to say if somebody's prowling on your man not to fight them okay. this is to say don't fight somebody whose man you're trying to prowl on don't touch things that don't belong to you we've been saying it since season two but if somebody touching that something that belongs to you free reign <laughs> You ain't got to tussle, but you got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> she says, sit down on this sofa right now. Yeah, we got to have a girl chat. You're doing too much. This and I think that that's an, an important conversation to have. But also we have to be self-aware enough to know I'm try I'm violating boundaries here and I'm not being... I'm not being loyal. And I think most people's question would then be, but other women do it all the time. You're not other women. Yeah, uh, hello. You're not. Hello. Whatever people are doing, they're on their own glowing and growing journey. Maybe they're battling different things that are at a different stage than you. Mm. But once you become reconciled with the fact that this is the woman that I want to be, these are the values that I want to have, right. values of sisterhood, values of integrity, mm -hmm. X, Y, Z, I know when I am crossing that line. I know when I'm acting not in alignment with what I said I right. want to be. Um, and you have to be honest with yourself about that. And maybe you're sitting there and you're thinking sisterhood isn't a value to me. Maybe this ain't the channel for you. And that's okay. That's fine. That's actually fine. Um, we wish you all the best, but maybe you want to buy our book. Link is in the description. <laughs> all right. Kill me. I just want to let you guys know, we're going to be so obnoxious with this book, yeah. just so that you know, buy it. You're lucky we don't have the shelf back behind us anymore because you would have seen 27,000 copies. If in I could stick it here. In fact, you guys are lucky we don't have pictures on our oh shelves. Oh my gosh, no. You know, we should like blow it up and put it anyways. We could actually yeah. put it anyway, but that would change the set. Oh. It would be orange. But our book is orange. I mean, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I anyway, mean, stay tuned. Sis, thank you so much for sending your dilemma. If you ever want to send a dilemma to us to get answer, to get an advice, to put it forward to the sisterhood, please email us the dilemma. Please keep it concise. Um, you can email us. One hundred and fifty words. <laughs> Please. please honestly but but yeah please send us a dilemma dilemmas at to my sisters.com send us your email and we'll get back to you hopefully you'll be on the pad so habit stacking 
compounding habits. 2023 Let's is the go. year you execute your vision. Mm-hmm. It's the year you execute your goals. Mm-hmm. It has mm-hmm. to be. And I think the best person to talk about with this is this my best friend. <gasps> The reason why is last year, Renee's word was optimize. If you haven't signed up to Renee's main list, you should. She sends amazing, amazing tips on how to optimize your life and really invest in your personal development and your growth. Um, But one thing that I I can testify of as somebody who watches her offline is you have optimized a lot oh, and i think girl. that optimize is right. that i think for me. It's okay. oh. <laughs> i think that optimization has come through prioritizing formulating habits stacking those habits mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then compounding those habits and yeah. really that has been the story of your optimization and so i wanted to kind of ask you first of all how does one go about developing habits in the mm-hmm. first place because i think it's so easy to have a desire and to have a goal and we're still in the you know the early parts of january yeah, everyone's yeah. vision board the the glue has barely dried basically like it's all fresh it's all are new falling off it, as you yeah it's it all up. fresh it's all new and we are raring to go because we have that adrenaline. We have that desire. But in a few weeks, that mm. desire is probably going to wear off. Life is going to get in the way. And so how do you turn desire into habits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great question. Thanks. I'm obsessed <laughs> with this kind of stuff, guys. This is like my bread and butter. Like, That's why I said you're the best person to talk about. I'm a big nerd. Um, <laughs> but no, I think as you were speaking, I think the first thing that came to me was go big to go small. Right. So I think many of us come up with a vision And then we stay there, Mm. forgetting that we need to go small in order Mm. to go back big again. Mm. So I think when it comes to thinking about like my life or how I've conceptualized like habits and the kind of goals that I want to get to, I think that a year is actually, it's a useful time frame. But I think when we're thinking about vision, we should be thinking around, we should be thinking about timelines. So what's the big picture vision over the course of the next like five years, the next 10 years. And this is not to say to have the granular details of what you would like to, like in 10 years, I'd like this, 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 that. It doesn't need to be that granular, Mm. but having a very big picture timeline is really important because many of us fall into the trap of seeing the year as if I haven't achieved this in a year, then I'm a failure. Sorry, I just burped and they'll hear that. Sorry. (laughs) If I haven't achieved this in... (laughs) <laughs> i felt it rise off of me i, I said, know no, you're no, no, looking no, 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 at me no. like i'm so no, no 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 sorry sorry that was all me but <laughs> i'm gonna keep that in sorry guys that's okay that's all right. <laughs> but i think many of us conceptualize this year as this defined period where it's like if i haven't achieved a particular goal by the end of the year mm. then that's proof of the fact that i'm a failure mm. when really if you were to zoom out a little bit the progress that you've made in that year is adding to that big picture timeline Mm. of the five years of Mm. the 10 years. So when I take like, for example, a small goal, it might be say like a financial goal. Maybe you haven't fit your, you haven't hit your financial goal for, you know, 2022, but that's not to say that you haven't been saving. Do you get what I mean? So it's like, maybe you set the saving goal of, I want to save my first like 1k. I was reading something recently that was like, I think it was like 39% or like 40% of adults don't have up to 1k in in their savings. So that's like a big thing to actually save for maybe you didn't hit the 1k maybe you hit the 500 pounds yeah or 500 dollars or whatnot that's still really important mm. and you're still making um important moves and you're still developing the habit of being mm. somebody that saves so maybe you didn't hit the year goal but you can optimize for that right. and that's where optimization like starts right you need to standardize before you optimize Ooh. and standardize is all about habits so before you start doing the stacking you need to deal with the habits and that starts with the going big to go small right so going big outline your vision everything what is it that you want what is it that you want to become what is it that you want to see everything that you desire and then you need to break it down into goals Mm. so if it is that you want to become financially free then that needs a goal attached to it that's Mm. actually specific and time bound so it may be you know i want to be financially free i want to make say six figures in the next five years Mm. Then you need to think about the strategies and the habits. So habits are basically like the stepping stones mm. as to how am I going to get from A to B. Right. There's A to Z or Z. <laughs> she said Z. there's the 26. There's the Z. Then there's the one. There's the, <laughs> there's the Z. Um, depending on where you come from. I know folks be saying Z, Z, all that kind of yeah. stuff. We say Z over here. Yeah. Before you can get from A to Z, you need to build up the receipts of A to B, B to C, C to D. Right. That's how it works. It's not an A to Z. Mm. It's the A to Z and then A to B, B to C. It's very much a um, progressive yeah. um, framework. And then you need to take it even um, smaller and think about 
what are the kind of characteristics that I would like to develop to make this thing less hard? I think many of us come in with this whole idea of for me to prove that I am worthwhile or achieving my goal, this stuff has to be hard. 2022 was actually a very easy year for me in terms of habits because I made it as easy as possible to become the person that I want to be. That is good. It's not about hardship all the time. There will be seasons where you need to work hard. It's actually about being smart and intentional and making your life peaceful. Easier. The easiest thing that I can think of, um, again, is say like um, a lot of my physical goals. Yes. Right? So I had the physical goal of I want to be able to do X amount of right. chin-ups in a year. Right. When I first like started training and all of that kind right. of stuff, like in my early years, I was very much around like, I want to make it as difficult as possible because I need to be going hard every single day in order to myself. Right, I need to prove to myself that I can do it. I need to, my willpower, all that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. 2022, what actually helped me to get my, um, so I wanted to get a goal of like five to six chin ups. Yeah. I ended up doing nine. Come on. In order to get that nine, mm-hmm. what I did was actually do less than do more. But okay, I did talk. less consistently and I did it well mm. and it was easy for me. So that's where the, that's the difference between kind of like habits and beating yourself up to get to your goal. Okay. It, is it worth it if the goal is causing you to kill yourself in the process? Mm. Will you even be able to cross the finish line no. if you're so tired during the process? Yeah. So with something like the chin up and just thinking about like, this is why I love strength training because yeah. there's so much transferable knowledge. Yeah. Sorry, if you didn't know, Renee <laughs> has like, Renee's an athlete basically and her um, <laughs> body fat percentage actually states that, just wants you to know. But also she lost 50 pounds in weight, right? And has kept it off for five years. So she's not like, oh, I, I was drinking some no. tea and you know, <laughs> no. it disappeared. Nah, no, no, she's no. been, she's earned every single one of them. Um, So yeah, just to give you your props so they know what you talk they about. Know, you they know. But they'd be, uh, folks would be like, what's she talking about now, nah, baby? I've been through. There we go. <laughs> the trenches um <laughs> but yeah what was really interesting about like strength training mm. is when people start exercising they often think i have to exercise like five six seven times a day or yeah. like a week or whatever when actually when you prioritize rest mm. and when you prioritize doing the like optimum amount you realize that it's not about doing more it's mm. about doing less in a smart way mm. it's about doing like so for example for the chin up I needed to manage like rest, yeah. but also I needed to have the amount of, I needed to hit a particular amount of sets to be able right, to do it. Right. So it was less so about like training back like four or five times, but it was about making sure that when I did show up, I showed up well. well. And then I also prioritized resting. I think many of us think of cons- of um, hard work as something that's a constant. Mm. And hard work and achieving your goals isn't about um, doing being in that constant state Mm. it's about when you choose the moments that you need to work hard you show up Mm. but when you have the moments to rest you honor that too so Mm. it's finding the balance between resting and working hard and if there's something that i really want to like impress upon people listening especially as they're thinking about you know habit stacking and thinking about like moving into 2023 it's not necessarily about working hard all the time but it's about when the time does come do you work hard Mm. and then when the time comes to rest do you you actually rest rest and do you honor that right so that's what optimization really is about. It's about standardizing those habits, standardizing the things that you need to like succeed, learning those things, and then optimizing and finding the balance between showing up and showing out. Mm. But then when you're not showing up, you're mm. resting. You're mm. actually allowing yourself that time to recover. Because the funny thing about like strength training, and I think it is a testament to a lot of things in life, is you actually grow when you're resting optimization is all about resting. It's not just about working hard. It's actually about rest. And I think this is something that I feel like you resonate strongly, Mm. even in terms of like managing burnout Mm. and thinking about your workers. Mm. There's somebody that's been mad consistent and it's definitely been Courtney down the yellow. 40 pounds down, baby. Exactly. Mm. And what I've loved about your journey is even the embracing of the different training styles, the embracing of understanding the importance of rest. Mm. So I think that, even as we're thinking about habits and stacking and all of that kind of stuff, it's about finding that equilibrium that works for you and works for your schedule, works for your timing, because it can be so discouraging when you look online and you get this arbitrary like workout calendar or vision board and you think that you're meant to show up at these particular times. It's about defining when you need to show up and then when you do show up, you show up well. Well, And then when it's time to rest, you rest. It's about finding that balance and finding that equilibrium. And then in terms of like habit stacking, mastery is important. 
mastery and focus is important. You need to be, for, look, some of us set too many goals. Okay. We set too no, many no, goals. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know why I wanted to, because when you were talking about the standardization of habits and how right. you really have to honor your time to show up, right. but also you have to honor your time to rest, right? We have to kill, and maybe someone in the personal development space has got to come at me because I know there's so many books on it and so many quotes about it. Right, right, We right. need to kill obsessiveness. It's too much. I get it. Love your goals. Be in love with your goals. But you don't need to be obsessed to the it's point where you push yourself into being what's unproductive. That's, that's the word. I think when you, for example, you can be in the gym, you finished all your sets, you finished all your reps and you're like, but I still have energy. No. Let me do, go home. You've done what you said you would do. And you have to also trust that your past self planned this well, mm. which is why we're always trying to equip you to be somebody who not only sets vision and dreams, but can actually make a plan. Because right. if the past mm -hmm. you or the person, you know, you are in January has written a plan, future you has to trust. She's thought about the entire year, right? So this plan and what I've been allocated to do today isn't too much. And it is also not too little. But the mistake that a lot of us fall into because we are obsessed, and because we really desire to see it's not bad but because we really desire to see our goals manifest and the results maybe with a bit of impatience we exert ourselves too much and then we are confused mm -hmm. when we mm -hmm. hit that point of burnout mm -hmm. or when we hit a wall earlier than we actually right. expected absolutely and it's like because you had done all your sets you had done all your reps and then you pushed yourself to do more and now you're more tired Mate. you've got to sleep more you've got to slow down in order to recover from the extra that you did and also you may risk injuring yourself mm -hmm. so as much as in the moment you thought yeah i'm good to go future you need you to stop they even call it wasted set. Mm. I'm sorry again. I'm, I'm a nerd. Don't guys. apologize. I'm a, I'm a nerd guy. Yeah. But there is scientifically, it's scientifically proven that above a, t a specific total amount of volume in a given time period, the more sets you do, the more they're wasted in terms of muscle growth, in right. terms of metabolism increases, right. all of that kind of stuff. So there is an optimum amount of volume. It varies for different people, but there is a general, a generally um, accepted amount of sets. And right. that's generally like 20 to 30 sets. Um, right. No, not even 20. I think it's 15 to 20 sets per week. Yeah. And when you do above that, these may be considered wasted sets right. or junk volume. Right. A lot of us have junk volume in our lives where we're doing too much and seeing little results and killing ourselves when really it's just about pairing it back. Yeah. And coming back to the point of mastery and focus. When you're setting your goals, you don't have to have 10 million goals to feel as though you are productive or successful. Mm. Sometimes it's about making one, two or three goals maximum and then revisiting once you've built up the receipts and mm. you've built up the mastery and that kind of stuff. So, for example, if you do have the goal of like, I want to get, you know, six figures, master getting that 1K yes. first. There is a mastery that is involved yeah. and seeing this as different levels and different stages. And there is no like dishonor in being at the beginning stages of a thing. It is better to master the thing because then you can compound. It's good. upon mastery that you compound. Come mastery on. is your foundation. Yes, you you need go. to be good at what you do yeah. before you can get the six figures, before you can get like the healthy relationship, yeah. before you can completely transform your life. Yeah. You need to master the basics. Right. There is no way. When we think of like, um, comp like interest, for mm -hmm. example, you get more interest in an account, the more money that you put inside yeah. it. Some of us have our accounts are in minus. Ooh. Okay. Some of us are a counselor in minus. I talk about financial, although some of us, you know, it's in minus. That's okay, girl. 2023 it's weekend. Fine. Christmas weekend. was expensive. Sweet Christmas it's, was it's expensive. Fine. It's January. We'll check in in March. We'll check it. Yeah. yeah. With financial yeah. goals, we'll go. Baby, you should apply to the vision. <laughs> 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 let's try and help. Let's, <laughs> let's get you to the zero balance. Um, but it's things like that, right? Where it's focus on one thing at a time. Mm accumulating some mastery mm. and consistency in that thing mm. and then stacking on top okay because it's very so, much about building so, that foundation first right. before you can build on top of that that's good so can you explain briefly what habit stacking is yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. habit stacking is essentially when you have like a f like suite of habits you may have like one or two habits and then compounding those habits so you can get to your goal quicker okay so that's habit stacking like so you may have developed um, some kind of habits and it also means eliminating bad habits okay. too. So st like we tend to think of like habits in the positive, which is why we don't necessarily talk about like bad habits, mm. like in, when we're thinking about habit stacking. Um, but habit stacking involves you identifying the good habits that you have and the good habits that you want to accumulate 
and then stacking on top of that until you get to your desired result. Okay. So for example, if you did have like a fitness goal, you may start with the habit of walking 7K steps a day. Right. And then in order to get to your goal, I don't know, body fat percentage, body weight or whatever, or if you wanted to increase your strength, then you'd add another habit, which is strength training three to four times okay. a week, that kind of thing. Right. So it's this whole idea of progression and using different habits and stacking them on top of each other in order to achieve your goal right right so it's like a domino effect exactly yeah, so you got and that's why i like that you talked about mastering one thing because i think with if you're gonna stack you gotta <sighs> make sure that the next the thing that i am stacking this new thing on top of is solid and i right. think it's unfortunate when we try to overload ourselves and then we start to realize actually it's like jenga right mm -hmm. the thing at the bottom of the pillar is the issue it's not the top it's the bottom and we got to really make sure we're building on really strong foundations Solid. and even with compounding it's like compounding doesn't even just come it's, it doesn't even just relate to interest it also relates to if you are going to think about copying and pasting right mm. so this happens to me a lot I'm copying and pasting stuff and then you realize crap there was an issue in the original format and now I've copied and pasted it a million times which means that there's an issue in all of the formats yeah. so now it's like if you don't master the original form mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's no point copying mm -hmm. and pasting it mm -hmm. there's no point compounding it because it's exactly. going to be compounded with error and i think in order to make sure that we don't compound on error we got to make sure that the the base is actually okay Absolutely. and i think january can be that month where you just make sure that you get the base okay and that also involves being attuned with your body and being humble enough and okay enough and to some degree detached from your plan enough to say we have to make some tweaks here and i think a lot of us become more obsessed about this i've made a, a really detailed plan and i've executed it and it's mm. like but maybe you're plan is not optimized mm -hmm. maybe your plan doesn't work for your body body it doesn't work for your schedule it doesn't work for the changes that have come it doesn't work for the timeline whatever it is and I think you have to like there was I'm in the process of formulating new habits and habit stacking and kind of trying to create this domino effect of like okay you wake up you do this and that allows you to then do this and that allows you to then do this and I realized that there was something I kept doing in the morning which is I would wake up and then I'd wash my face and cream my face with sunscreen and then I would work out and then I was gonna go to the gym and strength train later and it basically meant that I was gonna end up w washing my face like three times a day and I was like, that might be a bit too much. You know, as much as I'm into skincare, let me have some skin left. Skin. Yeah. Skin and then it came to my mind, then stop moisturizing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Like just wake mm -hmm. up, brush mm -hmm. your teeth and then work out and then moisturize after. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, you don't have to, because I don't want sweat to remain I on my face. The exact same thing. Yeah. So it's exact like, you don't have same. to do things the way that you ideally dreamed of it initially sometimes you have to say goodbye to some of the things you did previously right. and that's actually okay because ultimately it will help you get to your goal without as much inconvenience and mm. I think that's what you're trying to elim eliminate as much inconvenience as possible because if I had gotten used to moisturizing my face three times a day even though I didn't have to do it even though it was my preference to I would have gotten to a point where I'm like, bun this, I'm tired. Child. I'm tired of the back and forth. I'm tired of the this, this, this. So as much as that's a simple example, I think it's important to reevaluate our lives and say, as much as I may have developed certain habits, mm. are these habits even helpful, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. also can they be done? differently mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and that just takes thinking it takes you know telling yourself maybe i don't need to you know have sunscreen on when i go for my morning you know walk in my house mm. it's all right but i know that <laughs> i know the dermatologists are gonna be like no where's skin, skin sunscreen i wasn't weird. wearing sunscreen all night i'm sure for 30 minutes in the morning they gonna kill me i will I, i'll just stand away from not. the window i would hope not but no i think one thing that as you were speaking um came to mind for me is also just reframing habits and goal setting as mm. retraining your behavior. Mm. I think we fixate, when we're thinking about like goal setting, for example, we fixate so much on the result that we forget that the result comes as a result mm. of your behavior. Mm. So if you take it a step back and think, what behaviors do I want to cultivate or what, even what behaviors have I done that have been really good? Because I think sometimes we can fixate on the fact that we didn't get the results that mm. we wanted. That doesn't mean that your behaviors were poor. It just means that it needs to be tinkered with. Mm. So maybe you didn't, you know, get to your financial goal or maybe your relationships didn't work out but were your behavior in line with the kind of person that you want to be mm. so thinking about again character it's something we talk about so often on this podcast rather than focusing on achievements and results because there's going to be some people who get the results that they want but their behaviors their characters there's so many people that it's like you know 
they look great like physically they're looking strong and all that kind of stuff but their behaviors mm. this is um exclusively for the folks that are like into bodybuilding and stuff mm. like that yeah but there was like one guy who swore that he was natural oh Everybody, i know um liver king. yeah yeah, yeah. Ah! the liver king i said liver indeed you need to be delivered um <laughs> but this guy was really out here saying that's not primal i'm so you're not natural <laughs> out here on steroids and it's like, yes, you've achieved the desired result, mm. but your integrity and your behavior mm. in achieving those results, to what end? Mm. And, and now, then, yeah, and now look at where that, the exposure of that right. has gotten you in an industry which you were so, you were working so hard to re- gain respect. Like, Yo. So habits is very much about integrity and your behavior. Mm. You want to be the kind of person who is an integral person who does these things. It's not even just about like getting the result. It's not just about, you know, having the fit body or the great relationship or the aesthetic relationship, Mm. right? Because even when we think about like our relationships Mm. with people, we're often thinking about like, oh, I want to, you know, um, get to a certain place with my friends or my family or my partner rather than focusing on how can we change our behaviors so that we can actually have a fruit for relationship together like it's not just about the aesthetics or i hate to be that person that's like a party people because me i love me matching pajamas right. and stuff like that you know christmas time right. i was out here <laughs> trying to get courtney <laughs> in some matching stuff i love all of that mm. but if your focus is on the result of i want us to be in matching pjs mm. and not on the is our relationship good? Are our right. behaviors towards each other good? What's yeah. our habits towards each other? Are we building on a strong foundation? Are we building on a strong foundation. You guys will be wearing matching pajamas and then tomorrow scrap it. He will, he will hurt you. And Damn, will, will you hurt might you. kill him. It's like, there's like genuinely, I know we're in the age of like, nothing really surprises us or shocks mm. us anymore. But I even think of like couples where it's like, for all intents and purposes, it seems like they've had the dream life, aesthetically pleasing, lots of money to display mm. aesthetics and stuff. And then two twos now you hear that they're divorced or something terrible has happened in their relationship. Mm. And it makes me think like, when we're thinking about building a relationship and achieving goals, especially with other people, it makes me think like, what is the foundation mm. and how of our behaviors, our habits, like, fed into that and then another thing that i would like love to state for folks moving into 2023 is you have control over your behaviors because i know we've addressed this in so many podcast um episodes but also just thinking about the future and thinking about setting goals and thinking about our character i think sometimes we can also use the excuse of this is just who I am. This is just how it's always been. Yeah. Maybe even the past few years have shown you like, damn, I'm not really sure that I can change this mm. about myself because it's such a deeply ingrained mm. habit. And even some of us that have been um, victims of like childhood trauma or any mm. kind of trauma, it can feel as though that there are some behaviors and some habits that just cannot be changed and that you will always be stagnant. That is not the case. Okay. Okay. It might be that you do have to go to therapy. It might be that you do need to confide in other people. It might be that you have to take a good, long, hard look in the mirror. And it might be that even as you are trying to break some of these behaviors and habits, you will fail 10,000 times more. But let me tell you, after 10,000 comes 10,001. After 10,000 comes... 10,001 yeah. there's um so many like really great examples of people that have persisted and mm, I think that that's another important quality so I'm so all over the place there's yeah. so much to say no, go on but um the power of persistence in habit stacking because sometimes you will get a great habit and yeah. then stack a habit on top of that and all yeah. oh, the whole thing crumbles yeah or like you know there's in the chain of habits that you have there's one yeah. it reminds me of like you know when you have like a uh a wobbly tooth yeah it's just there wobbling just and you have to take it out so a new one can grow in it might be the case that even in the process of habit stacking moving towards your goal Mm. you'll find yourself taking two steps a bit backwards Mm. because then you have to lay another foundation Mm. or you have to develop a better habit Mm. don't be disheartened Mm. persist right there's so much to be learned and so much to be gleaned on the other side of persistence right even in the process of like optimization right that is not a linear journey Mm. you have to test and you have to try boy you have to do different things to figure out what works and don't be afraid to be tested this year like Mm. i made a video recently that was talking about like 
like, God, don't make me one of your strongest soldiers. Oh, like, man. baby, challenges are going to come through life. Hello. You better prepare yourself. Um, and it's, I get it. Like, I, I too would like to live a soft life. However, I think that testing really comes as a, a tool of refinement. Mm. And if we want to change, we have to be refined. And I want to kind of talk to the people who maybe your habits aren't necessarily like, you know, gym or you know the cliche stuff when we think about goals but maybe it's character maybe Mm -hmm. you're trying to let go of anger you're trying to let go of unforgiveness you're trying to let go of uh, pessimism whatever it is heartbreak whatever it is like I really want to assure you and the beauty of transforming through habits is that it really is about progress Mm. and progress is about steps right so even if you don't you're not perfect by the end of January. That's okay. That doesn't mean give up. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It means that you're a person who is trying. And Absolutely. that's all we need from you. That's all the glowing and growing journey needs from you to just keep trying. And maybe trying looks like I'm, I'm just going to sit here for a bit. I'm burnt out. But at least you're resting. It's still you trying to show up in a future time. And so even if you need to take time, it's okay. Just make progress this year. Like let's dispel the whole year long timeline right. idea I, it works for some people like december 31st as a strict deadline works however maybe this is the beginning of a five-year journey maybe this is the beginning of a 10-year one and that's completely fine sisters we're gonna be here the sisterhood is gonna be here the book is gonna be here like it doesn't have to be immediate change you don't have to be her in 2023 you can still be becoming her that's mm-hmm, okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> oh yo you know when your friend says something I, she said, Ooh. that hit me late as well you know? i was like oh that's a wow it's definitely giving oprah were you silent or were you silenced wow <laughs> well sisters wow. <laughs> nah, guys, that was wild happy well, new year a, happy new year what a great introduction to season four and we are going to continue to just bring you all the fire all the smoke so please stay tuned make sure that you have subscribed to our youtube channel Absolutely. make sure that you are following the podcast on any streaming platform so that you can listen to us as we drop our weekly episodes and be sure to follow us on social media we post memes we post glowing and growing tips okay mm. we share funny things great things updates challenges come on now all of that and so follow us at to my sisterhood but you can follow our individual glowing and growing journeys as well the lovely lady in the pastel blue on my right my best friend my sister my co-founder the love of my life my gift from god in the form of a friend is at renee kapuku and i am at cd boating absolutely and sisters whilst it is new year new and uh no sorry wow and sisters, yeah. And sisters, <laughs> whilst it is New Year will be, it's also more to my sisters. So sign up to the mailing list. Don't miss out. No, 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 no. I don't know why we always have to stress this, sisters, because yeah. honestly, season three, the sisters missed out that weren't on the mailing list. Yeah. And what we have planned for season four, if you miss out, the weakest link is not even the perfect descriptor for you. This is this is poor form okay if you want to learn more about habit stacking how about you start with the habit of signing up to the two my sisters yeah because we will be sisters every we'll week. be every week glowing and growing tips so please please and also make sure to subscribe to my good sis on the youtube oh, she yeah. has been killing it recently at cd Boate, you already That's know where me. to find her thank you and of course you've seen it already the book <laughs> buy it <laughs> buy it order it please. order it thank order you it. you'll enjoy it you'll love it but well. sisters well our time is well and truly up for now but guess what we'll be back to stack 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 in another episode <laughs> and until then keep, keep glowing, glowing and growing, and growing. <laughs>